Good morning, friends. What's up? Welcome back to my channel. Merry Thriftmas day number 13. Getting a really early start to this morning, if you can't tell by my voice how I look right now. I literally just rolled out of bed and got in my car because I heard about a moving sale, um, kind of last minute, that sounded really good. Um, I was planning on thrifting today at Goodwill just because I went to an estate sale yesterday. It wasn't that great, as you saw, and I didn't really see any others that looked good, but last minute, I found out about a sale today that they call a moving sale, um, and so I guess it's basically like an estate sale slash garage sale because um, they just said it was the whole house. So I'm gonna go and see what I can find there. They advertised designer clothing, which sometimes when they say designer clothing, they mean like, I don't know, Chico's or some other brands, which there's nothing wrong with it. It's just not my idea of designer clothing. So we're gonna see what we can find. I'm gonna grab a coffee and try and wake up a little bit, but get there early because early bird gets the worm. And I'll take you guys along. We'll see what it's like and hopefully, fingers crossed, it's better than yesterday's sale. And if you're new here, welcome. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I do a lot of thrifting, estate sale, Poshmark related videos but let's head out. Heading up to the sale, it's a pretty cold and rainy morning, just kind of gloomy, but I think I'm the first one at the sale, so gonna see what I can find. Walking up, I already spot something that catches my eye. It's this really cool Indian statue. Looks like it's carved out of an old tree and just such a unique piece. I kind of got distracted by that thing, um, but looks like the sale is gonna be in the garage, so everything is in the garage. It's not gonna be in the house, and of course, I'm gonna go look at the clothing first because that's always my first stop, um, especially at garage sales. I'm not really into like electronics or anything like that, so there are some clothing it's kind of dark back here so I'm sorry it's gonna be hard to see what clothing I'm looking at but I'm just looking for anything that catches my eye as far as style those are some graphic tees that were nothing special um, I'm seeing a few things that um, just yeah again not my style nothing was an amazing brand that I could see so far and I'm just gonna look through everything Moved on to a pile of bags, and the second bag is this Cavu backpack, so I grabbed that into my pile. Um, I usually pass on Vera Bradley. It doesn't sell well for me, or nor is it my style. A bunch of reusable bags in here. See those a lot. And then just some smaller little wallets and things. Nothing special. Looking through the clothing, I'm still looking for that designer clothing that was advertised. I personally um, didn't really see anything designer. Some southern designers, I guess you could say, like Vineyard Vines and stuff. But to me, that's just name brand. It's not necessarily designer. Um, again, I look more in these situations for styles that catch my eye. And then I look at the brand, especially lately. Um, as, as I curate my closet, I'm looking more for styles that fit. This felt like a nice piece. I looked at the tag. It was that new label, Cabbie. Um, but Cabbie, I'm pretty picky with. It doesn't sell amazing for me unless it's like a very unique style. Um, they had a bunch of old Letterman jackets. Those things are expensive. So if your kid goes to that school, that would be a good deal to get. Some old ski jackets. Um, nothing I wanted to grab. Um, I found a cloth and stone shirt. I've talked about it before. That brand's very hit or miss for me. This one, it seemed like it was a little shrunken, so I did pass on that. This plaid thing caught my eye, but no, nothing special. This stripe dress was by Madewell. It was an extra, extra small. And while I do buy all sizes, extra, extra small is a little harder. And that ended up having some wear, so I passed. A bunch of those like preppy chino shorts, those don't usually sell for me personally. I saw some workout stuff. And these first leggings look like the Alamoto leggings, but they were just a knockoff. And then I liked this color and pattern on these leggings. You will probably see those in my haul later. And then this is a pair of Lululemon. They're an older style and also they had a lot of wear, so I passed on those. I found this Yeti cooler in the corner and I thought this was gonna be a major score, but I threw it in my pile and then when I was checking out later, she said that wasn't for sale, so she put it back in her house. 
so I couldn't get that unfortunately. Um, some t-shirts, I saw a box of t-shirts and sometimes you can find some really cool old vintage tees and a lot of these were like Alabama and different high school and Victoria's Secret, um, just different college tees and things like that but nothing that was unique enough or like vintage for me to grab. Okay, this last rack is the men's rack, and I grabbed this one shirt off the men's rack. You will see what it is in my haul. And then there was a small shoe rack in the corner, and it was very dark over here, so sorry you can't see. There are a couple pairs of shoes I did end up getting. Starting off the haul with shoes, I picked up this pair of high top fans. They're just navy blue and white, one of their classic sneakers, and they're in excellent condition. Look like they've barely been worn. And these are a women's size six and a half. The other shoes I picked up are these leather ankle booties. They're by Lucky Brand, and I like how they have the exposed zippers. Just a low stacked heel, and these are in really good condition as well, and they are size seven. And then I picked up this Kavu backpack. This is called the Rope Sling Bag with like the braided rope strap. It's just a one shoulder kind of backpack. It has the embroidery across the back and these do pretty well for me. I typically pick them up when I see them and this one was in good condition. I did throw it in the washing machine and just freshen it up a little bit. They wash really well and I liked the print on this one so I grabbed it. And then I grabbed a couple travel bags. So this first one is printed with, I think it looks almost like little crosses, and it's by Spartina449, which I think started in the south. It's a little more of a preppy line, um, but I do like the style of Weekender bags, so it's got the double handles, and then it also has a long crossbody strap that you can take off if you need to, and this one's in really good condition. It's nice and clean, and I just like gave it a quick wipe down, and it's good to go the other travel bag I picked up. It's more of a duffel style and it is by this brand Hartman which I am not familiar with but I picked this up based on style. I love how it's an all leather duffel bag and I really like the color as well. It just looks like it's aged really nicely. Um, it does have obvious signs of like use and wear so you can see there's some marks on it. On the bottom of course there's some different marks and everything. I didn't try to polish or clean this because I didn't want to mess up the look of this leather. Like I think this kind of leather just gets better with age and it's also really clean on the inside. So what's nice is the inside is lined and it's super clean. I just wiped this down with um, like a cleaning wipe and then yeah, it's good to go um, The nice thing this also has a detachable shoulder strap so you can carry it like that or you can use the handles And then it has a bunch of compartments and stuff. So just a unique travel bag I think this would be cool with like a vintage scarf tied on it and then on to clothing the first four items are actually from the sale and then I have some other stuff I want to show you so from the sale I picked up this pair of Athleta Capri workout leggings. I'm kind of picky with which Athleta leggings I pick up, but I like the printed ones. These have some mesh, and they are a size extra small. Um, size honestly doesn't really matter to me. To me, it's more about the style of them, and I do notice more athletic wear sells towards the very end of the year and like New Year's when people start having resolutions. And then I picked up this pair of jeans, and I'm not sure if I've ever sold this brand before as far as jeans. I know I have a jacket in my closet. It's cut from cloth, and these are a size 8, but I picked these up because I like the two-tone effect, so how it has the lighter and the darker, and then also the raw edge. I think this is a little more current of a style, and they're in excellent condition. They look like they've barely been worn. And then I found a Free People top, just an oversized shirt. It's got the stripes on the sleeves. These little like faux elbow patches. It almost looks like an old school football jersey. And it's We the Free by Free People. It's a size small. This is the final item I picked up from today's sale. It's a men's flannel plaid shirt. And it is by Patagonia. It's a men's size large. This is called the Fjord flannel. That's the style of it. And they do really well for me in both men's and women's. So I always pick it up when I see it. Um, they usually go for around 35 to 40. They just have a good resale value. 
Okay, now on to a few other things. So if you guys watched my thrift miss day number two, you might remember I found this Johnny Was size large blouse at Goodwill and it had some like grease stains on it. And I asked you guys how to get it out and I got a lot of great feedback and I ended up using Dawn dish soap on it and I put Dawn dish soap on some spots there were down here, which as you can see, they're gone. Um, I left the Dawn soap on overnight and then I washed it. I actually did it twice and then they came out, but I also want to get some some people recommended, I think it's called Lestrol. I need to um, double check the name, but I want to try that next time as well. But Dawn dish soap, the blue kind, it worked perfect. Okay, these last six items are actually from my personal closet, which I'm working on cleaning out. So I'm gonna get some stuff listed on my Poshmark. And first I have a graphic tee. It's just a Rolling Stones, like cream colored tee. It's a size medium. The next t-shirt is a Paul McCartney graphic tee. It's really, really soft. It's by Trunk LTD, which is actually one of my favorite graphic tee brands, and they also have a pretty good resale value. Um, this one's also a size medium. This next top is a super oversized burnout tee. It's by Free People. Um, we the Free by Free People. This one's a small, but again, it's super oversized because I'm normally a medium, and that's what I took. And then I have this Poshmark long sleeve shirt. It's like a football jersey style. It says Poshmark, established 2011. I ordered this in their Posh Fixings closet. I just never wore it. It's a size small. And I'm really just trying to minimize my closet some. And then the next thing I have is this cropped hoodie and it's a leopard animal print and it's by Alternative Apparel, which Alternative makes one of my favorite um, or some of my favorite like more basic pieces so that's a size medium and then the final thing tonight are these jeans and these I actually thrifted for myself but they were a little too big um, they have these frayed ends which I thought was really cool they're by Pistola they are a size 29 and yeah I just thought those were a fun pair of jeans that unfortunately didn't work for me so it's much later in the evening I'm still rocking the makeup free look I did take a shower but I feel like I've been going non-stop since thrift miss started and I might be getting a little bit of a cold so I'm trying to take it easy I might have even said this morning it was thrift miss day number 13 I can't remember it's actually day number 14 if I did say the wrong day earlier um, but just trying to you know slow things down a little bit and settle more into a routine um, but yeah I did get a few things earlier today as you saw in my haul and I think it's important when going to these garage sales or it was a moving sale not really an estate sale but garage sale that it can be easy to get caught up in like stuff being cheap or inventory being cheap and um, that doesn't necessarily mean that you need to buy it. I learned this the hard way. I used to have um, that mindset of buying stuff just because it was cheap and I thought it might sell but in my opinion it's better to be selective and just do a little more research whether that be looking at comps or just even from your own experience. Like for me I have a more curated closet. Um, I have a lot of repeat customers and I kind of know the inventory that works for me. So while there were a lot of different things at the sale I could have picked up um, just because it was cheap I feel like a lot of those items might have sat for a while for me so I was pretty selective with what I picked up. Uh, but it was still a great sale for me to go go to and I'm excited by what I found and I also got some really awesome stuff for my house so you saw that Indian statue which I absolutely love I have it in my living room right now I don't know exactly where he's going but he's super cool and then I um, also got this really cool trunk I told the lady I liked the Indian and I liked that whole like southwestern kind of vibe as far as furnishings go and we just started getting talking about stuff and she told me she had more stuff in the house that she wanted to sell so she actually took me in the house and was showing me like furniture and rugs and stuff like that and I ended up buying two chairs an ottoman a trunk and a rug from her and she gave me like the most insane deal um, so I'm gonna show you guys that stuff once I get it to my house I have to convince my brother to go back there and pick it up in his trunk but I just think sales like that it's so cool getting different pieces from everywhere and having like a little more eclectic style I've been in my house for a couple years but there's still a lot of furnishing I need to do and it can be expensive so that's just another avenue of finding I don't know more affordable and unique pieces that you don't see everywhere like that Indian statue which I know is not for everyone but dang that thing was she said she bought it new $650 and she sold it to me for $40 like I think that's a steal but anyways I've digressed um, 
Oh, I also showed you in my haul today some items for my personal closet, which I really need to go through my personal closet. I mentioned um, in a video previously that my goal next year is to only buy like pre-owned items from the thrift store, Poshmark, you know, anywhere like that, um, as well as like items I carry in my boutique, but I'm looking to not buy retail or like go to the mall or anything like that in 2020. I want to support smaller businesses and then also pre-owned items. So I'm trying to downsize the closet I have now because I of course want to shop for myself next year while I'm out and get some new stuff. So I'm trying to sell items from my closet and that's actually how I got started on Poshmark. And what I was going to do was like the whole Marie Kondo thing and take everything out of my closet and then like go through and decide what I want to sell. But I kind of thought I might get overwhelmed by that because I feel like I would end up with this huge pile to sell and then um, it would take me forever to get listed so I think what I'm gonna do is just a little bit at a time which is kind of my method for everything um, and pick out like five or six items each day just to get listed for my personal closet so be on the lookout for that I'll probably show you guys those items too because it does go with the whole style of my Poshmark closet my customer is kind of like myself so hopefully you enjoyed seeing that let me know if you've ever done that whole like Marie Kondo thing and gone through your entire closet and like pulled everything at once. I feel like I'm kind of sick of everything in my closet and I would just have like a majority of my closet sitting in a pile. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. Um, oh, the other thing I want to do, sorry, I feel like this ending is getting kind of long. So hopefully this video won't be too, too long for y'all, but I do want to answer a question because I'm trying to answer a question in each video, um, the rest of Thrift Miss. So let me pull up my questions on my phone. Okay, this question actually kind of goes along with what I was just talking about. So it's from Ty, 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 four ties, T A I, <laughs> zero, zero. How much did you invest to start your business? And I think this is a great question. I actually invested zero dollars because, like I said, I started out by selling my own clothing. That's how this whole journey started. I didn't even know there was such a thing as reselling, like people going out and buying stuff to sell. So um, my previous uh, experience. I had a lot of experience in retail and I had accumulated a lot of clothing that I wasn't wearing. So I started selling my own clothing and then I took that once I found out about resale. I like was kind of saving that money because I also had a full-time job and then I found out about reselling and I started investing that money in inventory to sell. Um, I did not spend a lot of money at first when I was reselling because I had no idea what I was doing. So I, you know, would have a smaller budget or start out and just buying smaller amounts and then like figuring out what was selling and buying more but I didn't like invest a certain dollar amount and I think that's the cool thing about this business is you can literally just go in your closet and start or go in your husband or your boyfriend or your sister or your mom or your dad like just start talking to people and telling them what you want to do and people are more than happy to help you like one of my sister's really good friends she's so sweet her and her mom actually and they still do this they give me their clothing that they no longer want that they would have donated to see if there's anything I wanted to sell and they don't expect anything in return they know what I'm doing and trying to build a business um, or new in the beginning and so they just give me that inventory and it's free inventory so I think that's something that you can do is just reach out to your friends and family maybe post on your social media and let them know you're looking into trying this business and it might not be the type of items that you love at first and that's okay because you're still learning it's gonna teach you like how to take photos how to list your items how to ship things and you're not losing any money on anything um, you're just gaining and building that experience and then as you get more comfortable doing everything then you can start to spend money on inventory and things like that and you don't need to spend money on anything fancy in the beginning you know taking all your pictures on your phone I still do all of that um what else with lighting like I used to just stand in front of a window use natural lighting um, I didn't use any kind of fancy equipment you do need something to print out your labels but if you don't have a printer you can usually go to a library and print out labels you could go to like a FedEx or somewhere like that and see if you can print your labels there your shipping labels and you can use the free priority mailboxes from the post office so it's really a super low initial investment don't feel like you need to have like seed money to start out so I think that's one thing that could potentially stop people but there's lots of ways to get 
get inventory and just going in your own closet and starting from there, getting the experience. Don't worry if you're gonna make mistakes at the beginning, but you have to start somewhere. So that is my tip for you. So thank you so much for that question, Ty. Ty, Ty, Ty. <laughs> um, but anyways, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I always appreciate it. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and also the thumbs up button. And I will see you in tomorrow's video. Bye guys. Thank you.